I don't even know what to say. It's still Tuesday. October 23rd, 24th, something. And I told you all <clears throat> this morning that today was going to be a busy day. Because I had so much shit planned to do at home. I had therapy to do with my individual therapist today. I just walked out of there and it was a rough session. I don't want to go home. I don't want to keep staring at four walls. I'm low on gas, so I can't take a drive. The money in the bank is reaching the low side, so it's not like I can treat myself to lunch. It was a hard session, man. We talked about some more of the significant attachment figures in our lives growing up, now, etc. And what hit home was one of the worksheets that I had to do this last week was writing down things that could be obstacles with my therapist in my treatment plan. And I had to tell her that I thought in one particular thing that if I said this, then she would see me as weak. If I said this, she would think I was exaggerating. And we, we talked some in-depth shit. If I were to write a book, a memoir of Jessica Williams to the age of 44, some of y'all wouldn't believe it. You would read that book and you'd be like, there's no fucking way. No fucking way. She's making this up. But I wouldn't be. Every last sentence would be the truth. And... I just have been told so many things so many times through my entire life that it's unreal. <clears throat> They've become part of my core belief system. And as part of my assignment before my next appointment. Y'all are going to have to excuse me. It's hot in this van. And I need a cigarette. Um, I need to look at each of my attachment figures. And the statements they've made. And find the correlation to 
why I think my therapist would feel that way. And I was a little confused. And I asked her to explain. And she used... One of the examples from my aunt. No, she didn't realize it was from my aunt. But when she said it, hot tears immediately welled up in my eyes. Because I instantly understood what she was trying to tell me. And I'm having to process a lot right now. And I thought I would process it with you. This walk on the path to recovery or the path of finding myself or, you know, the path of who I really am outside of being everybody's go-to person is a long one, a scary one, and this is mental health. I simply cannot do it alone. rephrase. I do not want to do it alone. And I'm not alone. I have my treatment team. And I have friends and a husband that I can talk to. But sometimes even that isn't good enough. And I'm hoping that Using the tube of you will be a good platform to help me process things. My mind is just so freaking blown right now, I can't even drive. I'm still in my parking spot at the treatment center. And I've been sitting here for well over 20 minutes now. Because I don't feel well enough to drive. It's like I said, I don't want to go home. And there's not many places nearby that I could go to... Ugly cry. And that was something else. When we, when I made the connection between my aunt and the example about why it might be an obstacle to my, my treatment, after I sat there for a second and processed it, I looked up at my therapist and I said, Okay, that's it. I'm done for today. And I still had like five, ten minutes left to my session. She said, Okay, that's fair. But she noticed that I had tears in my eyes. And she asked me if I was okay. And I flat out told her, I said, No, I am not okay. I see exactly what you're talking about. And I don't want to deal with it right now. I want to go have an ugly cry. I, I need to cry. And she was like, well, how come you can't cry here? And I said, because for whatever reason, my body will not let me cry unless it's in front of specific people. Those who have truly seen me at my roughest. 
my sister, my husband. I'm not even sure if my roommate has ever seen me ugly cry. I know she has seen me throw some fucking tantrums, but I don't know if she's ever seen me ugly cry. And she said, well, you know you can let out your ugly cry here. It's a safe place. I'm a safe person. And I told her again, I said, my body physically will not let me cry in front of anybody. Only a select few. And she said, the last thing she said to me was, well, ponder on that and try and figure out why. Bitch, I don't need to figure out why. I know why. It's because I am the Gen X. I am the children should be seen and not heard generation. I am the, you're being melodramatic, calm the fuck down and go to your room generation. I'm the get out of the house and don't come back until you can talk calmly to me generation. I am of the generation where emotions were not a thing. You could not show weakness. And if you did, you were ridiculed for it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting in my van, in the parking lot of the treatment center, wishing the ugly cry would come, and instead, I'm getting pissed off. Pissed at a dead woman, long dead woman, be 20 years next year. My aunt, somebody that I should have seen as a safe person, but instead was somebody who would beat the tar out of me, somebody who would lock me in my room or withhold food or lock me out of the house. Make fun of me for whatever reason, and then go, oh, I'm just joking. And I hated that so goddamn much. And when I found out that my sister was pregnant with her first child, I swore then and there, I would never be that aunt. I would not withhold the food from the child. I would not treat the child as if she was less than a speck of dirt on her shoe. I would not lock the child out of the house. And yeah, I'm sure along the way, I made some mistakes. I know I did, because I lost her when she was 14. She barely speaks to me anymore. She barely speaks to her mother. And that hurts. Because we both have tried our damnedest to make sure that we broke the generational cycle. And I know my sister feels like a failure. She shouldn't because she's been the best mom there has been for the last 18 and a half years. And I feel like a failure because I've not been the best big sister. I've done what I can when I can with who I can. But it never seems like it's enough. It's like I'm not good enough. And all of that stems from one person that was supposed to love me and help my mom take care of me. And all she ever did was put me down, 
Tell me I would never amount to anything. Call me names. Withhold food. Lock me out of the house. I'm mad. I am big mad right now. And I don't feel safe to drive, which is how come I'm still sitting here. Because when I get big mad, I get reckless with my driving. That's me tapping my foot on the floorboard. I don't know what to do right now. I want to call my mom. Heaven don't have a phone. I want to go home and go downstairs. And have that ugly cry on my big sister's shoulder. Heaven don't have a phone. I want to sit here and have that ugly cry. But now that ugly cry will never come because I got pissed off. This is what trauma work looks like. It ain't pretty. And that's about all I got to say about that. 